Hey there everyone, this is Samuel Johnson and welcome back to the MCU Perspectives What If Edition. And today we're going to be discussing episode 7 of Marvel's What If. What if Thor were an only child? And if you can't tell by this expression, this is going to be fun. Now before we get to the plot summary of course, we should talk about how things went in the main MCU and what that and how this episode diverged from that. So you know how you know the relationship between Thor and Loki and how it got started, how thought how Odin, while battling the Frost Giants, came across the small baby Loki, and how in the main timeline he took Loki back with him to Asgard and raised him as his own. As a result, Loki and Thor grew up together, and Thor and of course Loki was a bit mischievous and cunning, but ultimately he's the one that kept Thor on his toes, and while Thor grew up to be a meathead, Loki was the one that was usually there acting as a somewhat voice of reason, though he also did, again, God of Mischief and all that. And of course, we know how that relationship turned out, how through Loki's, through Loki's manipulations, Thor, Thor got banished to Earth, almost lost his powers, but it, a lot, but it taught him humanity and decency and all that good stuff, and as a result, Thor... And as a result, Thor became the hero that we know today, who wound up who wound up battling with Loki, and who, over the course of several movies, eventually, eventually they both reconciled, and they both and they both were and they both eventually started willingly calling each other brother again, brothers again, before you know Loki was killed by Thanos. However, just like a lot with a lot of other what ifs in this up in this series, we have to turn the story back. We have to rewind the story a little. In this case, we have to go back to when Odin defeated at to when Odin defeated the Frost Giants. In this case, he did in this in this reality, he still found Loki as a baby, but instead of taking him back to Asgard, he returned Loki to his people. No ifs, ands, or buts. He just gave him back, and that was it. The end result: Thor was raised alone. And without Loki there to be the bad seed, so to speak, or and to kind of even Thor out, Thor grew up to be kind of a prick. A par He's now grown up to be this like arrogant, entitled, douchey prince who just kind of likes to party, abuse his power, and just have fun. And of course, his parents are embarrassed. Like. In this, like, this movie, like, for, as such, like, for example, this episode's supposed to take place around when Thor, the movie Thor took place in the main timeline. And uh, and just like in the movie, Odin goes into a sleep. But because Thor was never banished to Earth, he's there when Odin goes to sleep. And he's just, like, patiently waiting for Odin to go to sleep. And so the instant Odin passes out, that's when the things get real. Like, first, Thor's mother says that she's gonna go off, spend time with her sisters so they can enjoy the sol the sol the summer sol the summer solstice. But she warns Thor that while she's gone, he is not allowed to have a single party. He needs to be studying, he needs to be mindful, and if he does anything stupid, Heimdall will see it, since Heimdall sees all. Of course, Thor's like, no, it's fine, Mom, I'll take care of it. And so the instant she's gone, he goes to his for all his crew, and they're like, well, what, what do you, like, we can't have a party, your mom says that she's saying it. But he says, we can have a party, because there's one, pl because there's one planet in the universe that is so backwater, so out of the way, that Heimdall wouldn't even look at it. And that is Earth. As such, Loki tells his friends, spread the word to, the, to every realm that you can find. We're, we're, going, we're partying on Earth. And so, they teleport to Earth, I'm guessing using a secret Bifrost, because as we've seen, there are like secret passages around Asgard. In other... And so Thor, Thor lands in Vegas and tells the people of Lore of Earth he is here to party, and it is get he's here to party, and everyone is invited. And that is the entire episode. I'm not even kidding. This entire episode is frat boy, beardless Thor, because yeah, he doesn't have a beard, just turning Earth into his own private fun land and it is glorious i am not denying that that is the whole crux of the episode thor inviting like everybody from every corner of the universe together and just saying we're partying have fun and everybody comes we see like cameos from all these other character other cosmic characters 
from throughout the MCU. Like, we see Korg, the Grandmaster, and his kill crazy bodyguard. We see Nebula. We see Surtur for some reason. Rocket Raccoon. We see Drax. We see Frost Giants. We see that. Th we see even see Loki in this timeline. And because he was with the Frost Giants, he's now like big and he's not like big huge and he still has the horns but it's an ice crowd and he and loki are best par best party buds to the point where they just call each other brothers from another mother it's just so stupid and they're just like they're all just there to goof off have fun and things get destroyed in the car in the, in the crossfire like they're just there to party hardy have fun and it's so stupid and insane that i and love it i'm not going to deny it that is what i love about the episode that is honestly hands down one of the reasons the main reason i think this is a great episode and i know i'm saying that right now in the middle of the plot summary but just the episode is so goddamn insane so balls to the walls crazy so high on it on just how weird and out of place it is that it know that it just seems self-aware and loves it, embraces every second of it. Hold on a sec. Sorry about that, dog. But yeah, like I said, balls to the walls insane, and it just seems to know it. There is no point in this episode, well, one point, but for the majority of the episode, everything is just so effing crazy that you cannot take it seriously. And I think, and honestly, I think that was the intent of the episode. Nothing about this episode is grounded or calm or meant to be taken seriously. Our, because, my God, our main character, our, our main character is a frat boy Thor. There is no way in hell that you can say that sentence and take any of that seriously. And the whole episode knows this and embraces it and just goes nuts with it. Has fun with it and it does not let up not for a second not till the end and even then it's even how everything was resolved is great in fact let's get back to the plot summary right now so the thing is just like in the thor movie jane foster and her, the cat and cat Dennings character again i apologize for that i still remember her name marcy yeah i think marcy i think her name is marcy yeah she and marcy were trying to track space signals and energy signatures and what and that's uh, and it turns out they were tracking the bifrost because apparently like months prior a, a, a energy source similar to the bifrost apparently was shot at this planet and afterwards the planet was destroyed just gone and so once a similar energy signature is coming to earth she thinks oh crap we're doomed it's an alien invasion but when she and Dar when she and darcy yeah, Darcy, sorry. When she and Darcy go to Vegas and see that the invasion is just a giant party, they're like she's like, okay. What the hell is this? And of course and what's and the thing is, and as a result of this, they're all just kinda she she scan she used their scanner trying to figure out who's the one that was leading all this, and of course it leads her to Thor. And what I love is that they're both just smitten with each other right away. Like once Jane sees Thor, she's like, oh damn, he's hot. And when Thor sees her, it's like, oh, hey, you're, oh, hey, you look so tiny. How are you? What are you doing? doing? And the more they talk, the more he actually likes talking with her and to the point where he invites her to the party and suddenly all talk, uh, all talk of first contact and everything, it just gets thrown out the window and she just starts partying with him too. And Darcy ends up going on with Howard the Duck and they somehow get a stupid man. They somehow get a, like a Vegas marriage with an, El with an Elvis impersonator being the one that mediates it. And they're just like, they get magic tattoos with her getting a magic tattoo, him getting science. It's just so stupid. But, and of course, after all the partying, she of course wakes up in the, in this, in a room with a bunch of other people that are passed out. Think there was not an orgy. They just all happened to be in the same room. Like there's rock a raccoon in a sink, like Korg in a hot tub, Thor passed out on the couch, and she's got the biggest hangover. Hold on a sec. Sorry about that again, dog. Anyway, like I was saying, she's just like, she's obviously got a hangover, she's in bed, but her phone rings, and so she picks it up, and, or no, she ignores it, when suddenly someone bangs on the door, she goes in to check it out, and there's Agent Maria Hill of S.H.I.E.L.D., because, well, as when Thor and his party were on their way in the Bifrost, Thor, of course, tried... Thor, of course, she, Jane, of course, called S.H.I.E.L.D., thinking that this was a ma massive alien invasion, and that, the, and that the, it would lead, lead to the destruction of their planet. However, and, well, while S.H.I.E.L.D. hung up on her, they did take her threat seriously, and when Thor and his party landed, Nick Fury went in to try and call it, calm it down, saying, this isn't your planet, you're gonna have to vacate the premises, but before he could get a word into Thor, Korg apparently body slammed Nick Fury into a fountain, and the end result is, Fury's not dead, 
but he has, but he's still unconscious, and so Maria Hill has to do his job. And as such, because of the, as such, Maria Hill brings Jane and Mars and Darcy to the Shield helicarrier, and it turns out that the party is just getting out of control. It's starting to spread all over the planet, and as a result, and as a result of this, they're just worried about what this is going to do. So. Because they think, because they, they think that if it gets too far out of control, the planet could be in peril. But however, of course, Jane is thinking. Well, I spend time with him, and he seems like a lunkhead, but he doesn't seem like he's going to destroy the planet. And during, and while they're getting briefed, um, Jane's phone rings, and so she picks it up, and oh, she picks it up, and she does talk to Thor. And yeah, yeah, he's what I love is that yeah, I love that he has her number. And so Thor actually admits that he wants to see her again, wants to know where she is. And so she can't tell him, but she does ask what about that planet? You said not that planet because the parent because you guys you said you went there, went there because she did ask him about it during the party, and they did and he admitted that yeah they did go to that planet for a previous party, and they asked did you really destroy? It? And he's like no 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 we didn't. The planet was the planet wasn't even really a planet. It was more like a meteor, and it was burning up. At best we just sped it along. Everybody went home safe and sound. It was fine. It was like and I love which. I love that. It does actually, it dissuades Jane Spears enough to think that he's trustworthy, but of course, S.H.I.E.L.D. is still considering Thor a threat because of how the party, far the party is going. And so, with how powerful he is, Maria Hill thinks they have to bring in the nuclear option. And so, what do they do? They pull out Captain Marvel's PDA and turn it on. And as such, Captain Marvel comes flying to Earth while Thor and Loki are are, are meeting up again and chatting it up. And so when she, when Captain Marvel lands, she tells Thor, "You gotta turn, you gotta stop the party. Everything's that we're done here." And Thor's response: "You're just being a party pooper, pooper. You should smile more, have fun." And what does that earn him? Punch in the face. As a result, Thor and Captain Marvel get into less like this. Balls to the walls, insane fight, which caused them to fly all across the world to different countries, to, to different countries, different continents, just just going all out on each other. And it is so insane and awesome seeing Thor and Captain Marvel going nuts on each other because they're both two of the most powerful characters in the Marvel universe. And so seeing them duke it out like this, it's amazing. It's really cool. We see. Ca we see Captain Marvel, but every every blow that one can match, the other can can match back. And even and what one and if one trick fails, they try something else. And it's just like it's so very creative to seeing them not holding back, not holding back. They do treat each other as powerful e as equals. Like Thor's is it like we see Thor manage to punch her a few times, smack her with a hammer, or she can return it with a few powerful blasts, a punch. It's just so damn awesome and so balls the walls crazy with lasers and lightning and flying and thunderstorms and it all really ends with them both landing in France because Thor's party moved there because one of them because one of his guys was jonesing for a crepe. And Thor just says, You're gonna go on timeout. And so after the battle is over, Maria Hill just goes to the just Starts chewing Carol out, saying, I, "Nick Fury said that your punch could level. Your punch was like a new was like ten nuclear blasts. What was that?" And Captain Marvel admits she was holding back because if she went all out in populated area, a lot of people would die and it would be like a nuke. So they op so as such, when they're discussing the, as such as everybody's discussing this, they're like, "Well, what if we move the battle to an uh, to a, a place without any pop without anybody in there, like the desert or like an or the ice or." Uh, or like like uh, like just a, a place, pretty much a wasteland, whether a desert or a snowy mountain, etc. Just a place where there's nobody within miles, so that that way Carol can just go all out on Thor. Of course, Jane is like, no, we can't do that. We can't do that because the thing because she knows that while Thor may be powerful, he's not really a threat. At best. He's not really a threat. He and his crew are messing with the planet, and sure enough, and even during the battle with with Captain Marvel, Thor wound up messing with a bunch of national with wound up messing with like Stonehenge. And as we see in the party, we see a bunch of other people just messing with a lot of places on Earth, like the Frost Giants. We actually began graffitiing Mount Rushmore by by decorating them with ice sculptures. But she does say he's not a threat, and doing this is kind of overkill, and she wants no part of it. So Maria Hill's response. Throw them back where they found them. Like, they just bring them back to Vegas, drop them out in front of their band, and then just drive away. As such, well, Jane is like, oh crap, this is bad. We have to warn Thor. So she tries calling Thor, but for some reason, Loki has the phone. And admittedly, and Thor, and Loki is just getting into, like, party mode. It's like, oh, come on. It's like, oh, yeah, you're that girl I was talking about. That's nice. Hey, do you have a friend? And she tries to get him to hand the th phone over to Thor. And he's like, oh, okay, sure. But then he drops the phone before he can hand it back. So that's a crap plan. 
But ultimately, Jane is, but Jane realizes there's another way because she realizes, because she realizes, because, well, M Mar Darcy pointed out that if he's being a frat boy and he's hosting a party, why not just call his mom? And that's what, me, and when Jane realizes, if there's a Thor and a Loki, that must be, it must mean there's an Odin and a Freya. As such, she realizes we need to find a way to contact her. We need to find a way to contact Heimdall. As such, through her connections and through through her connections, she's able to and uh, and that one guy, that old scientist guy, I forgot his name, which I really don't like. I don't like because I did remember his name, and when they said it in the episode, I recognized it, but I can't recall it. But it's that guy from the first two Thor movies, the guy, the old like the older scientist guy, like like they contact him, and so with their technology and his help, they're able to rig a system so that they're able to con so that so that Jane is able to contact Heimdall. And so when Heimdall hears her, he immediately teleports Jane to Asgard. And so she all she has to do is say it's about Thor, and Heimdall just immediately sends her to Freya. And meanwhile, back on Earth, meanwhile back on Earth, as Thor is still just partying hard and having fun, Captain Marvel flies in and grabs him, and of course flies him to like an icy what like an icy mountain somewhere where there's no people. And so we see her all charged up, ready to battle. And in the meantime. Maria Hill is getting nukes ready because she thinks that they have to have that as be that's going to be their backup plan in case Captain Marvel is distracted or anything like that. And so if the countdown is getting started, they're getting everybody's getting ready to go. Thor thinks they're just going to have a battle. Captain Marvel's telling him, "I gave you a warning. You didn't listen. Now I'm you get I gave you a warning and you didn't listen." And meanwhile, Jane is ultimately talking with Freya, and all I love is that she sees they have shot, they have shot in it. She that Freya and her sisters are drinking shot day, so she just takes them and starts gulping it down as she's explaining everything. And so, but Freya does get the message that Thor's partying on Earth, despite the fact that she said not to. And so, just before everything go nuclear, I don't, I, I don't know if I, I should say pun not intended or not. I'm um, just what. Immediately, Freya sends an image of herself to Thor, and when Thor sees her, like, "Oh, mother! <laughs> you must, you must be using some pretty serious dark magics to, te to teleport yourself here." It's like I was told you're on Earth. A friend of yours, to, like a, a, a lady friend of yours, told me about this. Like Jane ratted me out, and he's like, "No, no, no! I'm back in my room. We're, no, we're back in. I'm back in my room studying and all that." At which point we see a polar bear walking behind him, and even Captain Marvel's just kind of chuckling at this. And she's like, it's like, and he's like, oh, you meant that Midgard? Oh, yeah, we came down here for a cultural exchange and so forth. It's like, oh, really? Well, that you're doing that well. Maybe I should come and see it. And so she teleports away, and Maria, and pretty much everyone in the scene realizes, okay, I think we're done here. And so Maria disarms the nukes, and they fly the helicarrier away, and Thor just begs Captain Marvel to help him and she's like, um, you know, this is your problem and she just flies away and so Thor realizes oh shit, I've gotta clean this up and so he flies back to the party and while Thor and he just pleads with everyone to try and help him clean up and at first no one's listening even Loki, the gr Loki and his crew get ready to leave including the Grandmaster and his bodyguard who, who, did, who get away with two scooters which is just so stupid but 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 ultimately Thor is able to use his power of his power to pretty much send a giant message saying we got to clean this up my mom's coming and she's not happy and so everyone realizes that Free is probably a force to be reckoned with so immediately all around the globe everybody is putting everything back where they found them Surtur who accidentally melted off the Statue of Liberty's arm, welds it back on. The, Thor has to knock off the ice chunks on Mount Rushmore. He has to get, he has to reunite power to this, like, to, to this giant, to this, to, like, the eastern seaboard. They have to, they have to clean all this graffiti up. They have to put Stonehenge back where they found it. And so, as such, by the time that Frida, Frida comes to Earth, so when she arrives, she sees Thor and a few of his party members looking like they're in the middle of a lecture. And so Thor's like, see everyone. It's like, oh, mother, I'm glad you came. And so everything looks all cheery and nice. And what's even better, Captain Marvel comes in with a with a tablet that has all this learning information he has on there. And it's like hours upon hours of stuff. And even Thor's like, even Thor's expression just says, this is punishment, isn't it? And Captain Marvel's response pretty much says, yeah, it is. And so she flies away, and at first they think, well, Freya's like, okay, I think maybe we should get going, and Thor's like, yeah, I probably should. Oh, wait, hold on. And so he tries calling Mjolnir, only he forgot to clean that one up, because it's covered in graffiti, beads, and someone's boxers. We never know whose. 
And at that point, that's, yeah, the cat's out of the bag. Thor realizes he's screwed. And so, I'm assuming that Thor gets punished, but the episode then cuts ahead to, like, sometime later. Jane is back in her van, still doing her research, when suddenly Thor knocks on the door. And while he says it wasn't cool what you did, it was the right thing to do, and he gives her a bouquet of flowers, and it turns out he still likes her, and he still wants to spend time with her. And so he says, maybe I could call you sometime, and she says, what about a date? And so he says, well, there's this planet of where everybody's literally unicorns, and even the waiters are unicorns, and she says, okay, that sounds great. And the episode ends with them both, just like, it's clear that they're still very much, they still very much like each other, and they want to continue spending time together. And it's just all cutesy and schmulty as Jane goes back into her van and Thor is walking away all happy with a with a pep in his step and in the background you can see the Watcher just get, giving a closing narration as he says as children on Earth and Asgard said and they all, they all lived happily ever after. Then the only serious moment in the episode occurs when as Thor is walking away a ray of light suddenly appears in front of him and from the lay of, ray of light we see hordes of Ultron robots coming through with, and we see who's leading them. Someone dressed in Ultron's armor, his chest adorned with the Infinity Stones, and on his head we can see a twisted visage of Ultron, while on his forehead we see a yellow stone. And when the, and when the, face, is, and when the face comes off, we see, we see who it is under the armor. Vision. And that is where the episode ends. So, yeah, my constant fanboying throughout this vlog is any indicator. I fucking love this episode. I'm not kidding. I love episodes that are so bad they're good. And this is one of those episodes. Especially, and I love the, I love the so bad it's good tropes if they're done well. And this episode does it very well. There is no point in this episode, aside from the ending reveal with Vision Ultron, that this episode is, should, needs to be taken seriously. Like I said, this is a frat boy Thor bringing an entire arm bringing entire legions of aliens to Earth, not to invade, but to party. And while he and his men... And it's just nothing about that scenario needs to be taken seriously. It's just... And the majority of the episode is just Thor going nuts, treating this like he's just... Treating this like he's a, like he's a kid going on the going on vacation like he's clip like he go like he and his crew go to different sites take in everything feet take the food take the selfies like and then and on top of that it's just so and it's just so damn fun seeing all these other cosmic characters just there at the party somewhere just enjoying themselves and goofing off and so forth like we again i mentioned how darcy somehow got a sh somehow got a vegas wedding to howard the duck with rock there was rocket in the sink in jane's room there was the Grand Master and his and his kill crazy bodyguard, and I already mentioned Surtur and how he tried hitting on the Statue of Liberty. There was just so many cameos throughout the episode. We even see Nebula playing craps in Vegas, and then when Thor tries rallying everyone to help him, what like her excuse is like, oh, I think I hear my dad calling. It's just like nothing about this episode is meant to be taken seriously, and it runs and because of that, it's so damn fun to watch. Every single moment in this episode is so stupid and over the top and insane that you can't help but love it. There is not a single moment where that where this episode takes itself seriously, and because of that, it knows how far it can go before without going without 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 jumping the shark. And this episode is just so perfect. There is so much fun to be had, so many joke potential, so much humor, so much insanity. Again, I love seeing, like, we see, like, we see the, like, we see the, this universe's version of Loki, and how he and Thor are best buds. I love that, seeing that. I love seeing Thor getting together with Jane in this reality, which I thought was actually really cute, like, despite, like, despite the fact that they're not, like, despite the fact that they're not really the same people as they were in the main timeline, they still clearly have an attraction for each other by the end of the episode. They want to have a relationship with each other still, which I thought was cute and adorable. I loved seeing Cabs and Marvel get brought in to essentially be the party pooper who's supposed to derail everything, and because she and Thor are pretty much super powerful, or almost the two most powerful characters in the Marvel Universe, we see them going head-to-head, -head and it is so damn 
awesome. There is no moment in this episode where the, where they go where it goes down. Every single moment in the episode is just a high. Every every single insanity bending twist is just that is just in great, and I love it. And the episode runs it right from the first scene. Like the very first scene is Jane getting the signal that the Bifrost is coming, and she thinks it's an alien invasion. And so the Bifrost lands in Vegas. You hear Thor's booming voice telling everyone that their lives are over. And then when it passes, you see Thor and is the you see Thor there. It's like because now from now on we're gonna party. And everyone's like, oh okay. And from there on, you know what episode you're getting into. You're here for a fun, insane romp, and I love it. It is just hands down great. And honestly, it feels like a breather after all the serious episodes we've had. Because the last three episodes were kind of dark. We got a universe where Doctor Strange went nuts went nuts in an attempt to save his loved one caused his entire reality to crash a, a universe where they were where the entire re where everyone was consumed with, by a zombie virus including the heroes we saw a universe where tony stark was rescued by killmonger but killmonger it turns out was just using him for his own gain and call which almost sparked a war and uh, but now but so those, and yeah, those are all very serious episodes, but this one is like a breather. Nothing about it is meant to be taken seriously, and they make it clear from the outset, they just want you to sit back, relax, turn off your brain, and enjoy the stupidity. And that is honestly what I did. From the very first moment to the very last, I was just having a blast for watching this. Nothing about, it was just pure adrenaline-filled stupidity and awesomeness, and I can't get enough of it. I'm not even kidding. This is probably my favorite episode of the series so far. It may not be the best, it may not have the biggest emotional depth, but I'm a sucker for balls to the walls, stupidity and insanity, and of course, and of course, it has to all, of course, be self-aware. It's enjoyably stupid, and I can't get enough of it. But of, and of course, it still does have its serious moment at the end when showing that despite all the funness, we have to we, the show's like saying, "Okay, now back to something more now back to something more serious." As we saw that portal open, and we saw that we saw that vision, we saw that alternate reality vision with an army of Ultron robots, the Infinity Stones, in, and with the Infinity Stones in his chest. So you know something's coming and if the trailers have ever any indicator it's going to be big and i cannot wait so overall overall this is just my favorite episode it's insane it's crazy it does not let up for a second and i love it i love it just for how crazy it is for how over the top it is or how amazingly since stupid it is I just can't, I, at this point, I'm all I'm doing is repeating myself. You just really need to go see the episode for yourself. It's fun. It's a, it's fun. It's action packed. It's silly. It's fun. It's hilarious. Just go see it. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching. I'm Samuel Johnson. I'm sorry if I repeated myself at several points, but I just, there's not, there's only so much I can talk about with this episode, but I hope you enjoyed it regardless, but I hope you went and saw the episode yourself because it really does need to be seen to be believed. And I hope to see you next week where we'll hopefully get some resolution for what the hell was going on with that alternate reality vision at the end. So until then, have yourselves a good night and take care. See ya.